so you all can take one one copies of bhagavad gita we are doing uh, chapter 7 from verse number 8 onwards online as well people can pull up their copies of bhagavad gita i will be sharing my screen as well is my screen visible yes okay great <clears throat> so i think uh, it's been some gap since we uh, had this this class we were having i think uh, last week radhashtami and before that some other programs talashri i don't know so uh, anyone remembers what we discussed 7.567 one material elements five material elements very nice yes <clears throat> okay what about them it all come from yes and so far given three additional elements non intelligence and form ego okay anything else so what what do we do th- with this information <laughs> what is the practical application of this information so krishna is the source of all okay so how does it matter to us <laughs> If Krishna is source of everything, how does it matter to us? Our eternal happiness comes from Krishna. Okay, our happiness is dependent on the Lord. Great. Okay, that's a good point. Anything else? Uh, it helps soul to get out cycle of birth and death. Okay, nice. So we all want to find the root cause of everything, right? Krishna is sarva karana karana. So sometimes something bad happens. Like, hey, why is it going on? Right? I am good. I have been doing good. Why bad things happen to good people? Right? That's a question. Then we see, uh, hey, all the dons and mafias they are living a luxurious life. You know, why good things happen to bad people? <laughs> That's another question. Right? So uh, there are so many things. The uh, the cycle of karma or or the uh, karma is actually very very complicated it's very difficult to understand sometimes we bewilder the completely are we get chalta like that so uh, therefore we are looking for truth we are all searching for truth nobody wants to live in illusion so here's uh, krishna is declaring it and uh, he is speaking bhagavad gita so that we can understand him unless god reveals himself it's impossible for us to understand him even the fact that we are not this body we are soul right ye humko pata chala hai <laughs> not that we discovered right there are uh, like i think some classes we discussed there are philosophers or uh, you know thinkers in the west right uh, people who are like gyanis gyanis means uh, you know they will analyze things very very closely try to figure out you know iska cause kya hai uska cause kya hai like that there are people who would you know sit at the sea shore in a storm you know watch the lightning hit the sea etc and they will actually sit there and observe they won't run away like other people just to understand what is this nature how does it work right i'm sure at at least i i had this question <laughs> when i was a child right hey, you know how does this all work or you know what is my purpose why why am i here you know we are just getting up early in the morning you know going to our uh, you know our studies or jobs etc doing the same thing every single day right so what is the meaning of all this so these are people who are like really into finding out the truth so we are all looking for the absolute truth in one way or the other like george harrison puts in krishna right we are all looking for krishna and bracket me love right so we are all looking for love <clears throat> so therefore when we understand how uh, krishna is the source of everything so here in this chapter in the seventh chapter uh krishna is starting to describe his opulences right previous six chapters he has spoken 
multiple things. Second chapter is like the summary of the entire Gita. Then uh, first six chapters are predominantly karma, right? The philosophy of karma, karma yoga actually, not kar just karma, karma yoga. The last six chapters are, uh, chapters are predominantly jnana yoga. The middle six chapters is the cream, which is bhakti yoga. So this is the beginning of his explanation of bhakti yoga. So it starts from uh, understanding the opulence of the Lord. If you see the progression of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam also starts you know, uh, with Janma Adi Asayataha, right? Knowing the absolute truth. So, uh, we go from a concept of how great the Supreme Personality of Godhead. First, understand his opulence. And then, you know, coming down to the 10th canto, we understand how sweet the Lord is through his pastimes. So, from greatness, then to sweetness, like that. So, even in Bhagavad Gita, similar theme is followed. Seven chapters, primarily, Krishna is describing, you know, how... He's different things in the, uh, you know, like here also in the eighth verse, he'll describe how he's taste in water, etc. So just for us to start meditating on the Supreme Absolute Truth. Okay, so let's chant the eighth verse. Rasoham apsu kaunteya Prabhasmi shashi surayaha Prabhasmi shashi Pranavaha Sarva Vedeshu Shabda Ke Paurusham Rishu Rasoham Apsu Kaunteya Prabhasmi Shashi Surayaha Pranavaha Sarva Vedeshu Shabda Ke Paurusham Rishu Anyone would like to chant the shloka, the Sanskrit shloka? Right? Raso ham apsu kaunte ya. Prabhasmi sashi surya yo. Prabhasmi sashi surya yo. Pranava sarva vedeshu. Pranavaha sarva vedeshu. Sabdava kehe puru. Shabda ke power sham rasho. Very nice. Yes, someone else wants to say? Come on, chat. Raso ham apsu kaunte ya. Raso shashi surya ya. Pranavaha sarva vedeshu. Shabda ke paur sham rishu. Okay, translation. Come on. Only. Translation that Prabhupada Jashila Prabhupada. O son of Kanti, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon, and the syllable form in the Vedic mantras, and the sound and each word and ability in the mind. So, so this is a series of shlokas. Krishna earlier, he is describing how all these different elements, like Roji mentioned, earth, water, fire, air, ether, they are coming from him. He is the source of all the elements. Then Krishna is describing how he is present everywhere in the universe, just like a thread in a pearl necklace. I think that was the last shloka we did. And now he is uh, you know, going further. He is describing that, O son of Kunti, I am the taste of water. So whenever we drink water, we can remember Krishna. Right? Krishna is the taste of water. Uh, the light of sun and moon. The syllable... Om in Vedic mantras. I am the sound in ether and ability in man. So uh, one very nice episode comes to mind. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada, he was traveling uh, in a flight and along with some sannyasi disciples and I think Shruti Kirti Prabhu was his servant at uh, that time. So Shruti Kirti Prabhu was just sitting next to Srila Prabhupada and uh, they were all sitting in the flight. I, I think, I don't know, wouldn't this flight? Oh, there was a big television. It was loud so that everyone can hear. So, Charlie Chaplin was going on. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the disciples of Prabhupada, they are trying to look away. <laughs> or, or television <laughs> or uh, movies like that. So, this is Maya. So they're trying to look away. And, uh, <laughs> notices. Is watching. <laughs> and he's laughing. <laughs> he's, he's having a great time. He's laughing. Charlie Chaplin is very funny. 
Oh, he's doing a really proud. He's asking us not to watch television, and he's himself, you know, watching Charlie Chaplin and laughing. <laughs> so uh, he asked Prabhupad, "How is it that you're watching and you're enjoying this?" So Prabhupad, he said, uh, he, "This man is so funny, but actually, the ability to make people laugh is coming from Krishna." You know, and he quoted this verse. He's like, "Krishna is the ability in man." So his ability to make people laugh is nothing but an opulence of Krishna. So Prabhupada could absolutely connect everything. Right? So it's fine for him. <laughs> Perfect. This verse explains how the Lord is all pervasive by his diverse material and spiritual energies. The Supreme Lord can be preliminary, uh, preliminarily perceived by his different energies and in this way he is realized impersonally. So this is one stage of uh, you know, meditating on the Lord. In fact, even in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a description of the Virat Purusha. Right? So there's a preliminary stage of trying to remember the Supreme Lord. Right? right. For, for us here, Sri Sri Radha Rasbihari is standing right down <laughs> and, uh, you know, we all can meditate very easily uh, on him. Right? Uh, such a beautiful form filled with sweetness. <laughs> right? It's rasa from all sides. Thank you, sir. So, uh, it's actually become very, very easy because Krishna has personally manifest in his own personal form as Shri Shri Radharaj But, uh, there are... Okay. Please come. So, <clears throat> but there are different levels of understanding of the personality of God. So, one of the very beginning stages of, you know, trying to understand the absolute truth is, uh, you know, through nature, for example. Understanding that, you know, there is a supreme power governing the entire universe. And that's the kind of description also given in Srimad Bhagavatam. I think second canto onward starts of the universal form, right? How, uh, you know, uh, the clouds are Krishna's hair, how you know the mountains are his bone, how the rivers are his veins, etc. So one can meditate on the Supreme Lord even just by looking at nature. It's 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 uh it's not it's actually hard to deny, <laughs> right? There are simple truths, simple truths are things in front of us, right, which are hard to deny, and there are complex truths which require a level of faith to understand, right? The truth is absolute truth is there, right. Faith is a vehicle which helps us to realize that absolute truth. It's not that it's not reality. Reality is there. It's existing, right? Like we discussed. Uh, but faith helps us to experience that reality. So uh, the preliminary stage, we understand, as I was talking about simple truth. Simple truths is we can understand how, uh, you know, this entire world is not come by chance. It's created. You know, where is the machine that can sow a small seed, right, and create a banyan tree out of it, <laughs> right? As I a chota sa able to do something like this, right? Where a small seed and you know it fructifies, generates millions of more seeds and other products as well. So we can understand how. Oh, okay. So we can understand how uh, you know if we are behind, our intelligence is behind creating some uh, skyscrapers or some machines or, you know, maybe a spaceship, uh, you know, having a satellite in the space. There is, a, you know, the biggest intelligence behind the entire universe, right? Maintaining all the planets in the orbit. Of the planet. So, uh, the impersonal realization is the first step where, uh, you know, he's perceived, uh, you know, by his all-pervading energy. As the demigod is uh, in the sun, is a person and is perceived by his all-pervading energy, the sunshine. So the Lord, although in his eternal abode, is perceived by his all-pervading diffuse, diffusive energy. The taste of water is an active principle of water. No one likes to drink sea water because a pure taste of water is mixed with salt. Attraction for water depends on the purity of water by its taste. And the personalist also glorifies the Lord for his kindly supplying tasty water to pinch man's thirst. So, again, Prabhupada is giving the same example. Just like, uh, you know, there is sun, sun globe, sunshine, and there is a personality 
uh, called Sun God as well, right? So we may experience sun through sunshine. We have no experience of the globe, right? If we try to approach the globe, we'll be born. So we may just see it from a distance, but primarily what we experience is the sunlight. So similarly, uh, you know, Krishna's, uh, we can experience Krishna right now also through his diffuse energies. Even sun and moon is, uh, you know, light of sun and moon is one of it. Uh, even uh, the taste of water, Krishna is saying, is one of his energies uh, or, or his manifestations. So a devotee appreciates his personal form as well as you know, the impersonal aspect where uh, you know, Krishna is exhibiting himself through his, dif his different energies. Practically speaking, there is no conflict between personalism and impersonalism. One who knows God knows the impersonal conception and personal conception are simultaneously present in everything and that there is no contradiction. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya established his sublime doctrine, Achintya Bheda Abheda Tattva, simultaneous oneness and difference. So uh, there are schools of thought where you know people think that oh we are completely different from Lord. How can we be same? Otherwise, what is the what is the meaning of God? <laughs> right? We are completely different. There is no similarity. There is another school of thought which says that we are the same. Right? We are not different. So which one is true? Are we same? Or are we different? We're same, not from. Yeah. Okay. We are qualitatively same, but not quantitatively same. Just a light. God. God is just a light. Immense <laughs> of light. So that's the that's the preliminary stage we've been discussing of understanding God. So absolute truth is. Uh, understood in three stages. Srimad Bhagavatam describes Paranti Tat Tattva Vidas Tattvam Yajnana Madhvayam Brameti Paramat Meti Bhagavanati Shabdhati. So uh, people understand absolute truth in three features. One is Brahman. First is Brahman. Brahman means uh, just like you said, you know, God is, you know, uh, maybe a big light or you know, unlimited light or source of energy, etc. That's the first stage of understanding the Supreme Lord. The second stage is people understand that, oh, uh, you know, God is everywhere. He is in every atom. So, Paramatma feature. And the last one is uh, Bhagavan. Bhagavan feature where we understand that God is a personality. Right? He is a person. Now, we may, according to our, you know, limited material calculation thing, means a person means a form. Uh, form means limited. Right? Form means it has to be defined. It has to be within our limits. But that's our calculation. <laughs> right? The absolute personality of God it has a form, right? and yet He is unlimited. So, uh, and, and one who understands the Bhagavan feature, he understands that it's a uh, you know Bhagavan feature is a superset for Paramatma feature and uh, Brahman feature. So, Brahman is actually described uh, nothing else but you know the effulgence from the body of Krishna. Again. So, some people like the same example. Some people just know the sunlight. <laughs> Some people understand the globe. Others may understand there is a personality, Vivaswa, the sun god as well. <clears throat> okay. The light of sun and moon is also originally emanating from the Brahma Jyotir, which is the impersonal effulg effulgence of the Lord. And Pranava, the Omkar, transcendental sound, is the beginning of every Vedic hymn, addresses the Supreme Lord. Right? Just like, uh, you know, someone may address someone, uh, you know, somebody who's a PhD, we, you may, we may address, you know, Dr. Partha Priyadas or something, <laughs> right? So we may address him as doctor or, you know, give him a good title. So Pranava Omkar is like that. It's, it's an address to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's not his direct name, but it's an address to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But they do not realize that Omkar is a sound representation of Krishna. The jurisdiction of Krishna consciousness extends everywhere, and one who knows Krishna consciousness is blessed. Those who do not know Krishna are in illusion, and so knowledge of Krishna is liberation, and ignorance of him is bondage. So if you know Krishna, right, you're liberated. Krishna himself declares in Bhagavad Gita, he says, one, Janma karma chame divyam, one who understands, uh, you know, my nature and my pastimes are transcendental, he is liberated. Someone who doesn't know Krishna is in ignorance or, you know, he's still bound by the three modes of material nature. So, uh, Krishna haya surya sam, maya haya andhakar, jaha krishna taha nahi, maya adhikar. Okay. Simple. 
Any questions, thoughts so far? Any reflections? Okay. So let's go to the next one. Do so you want to add something? <clears throat> so, yeah, this is one thing. You were mentioning about uh, how some of us, like you were in your childhood, but so I think all of us would have had this experience looking at this guy, the seeing star, and just wondering what is this world all about and where is this all coming from. Right? So, uh, like Rudy was saying, that nothing comes without uh, just by chance. There has to be a creator behind things. So, it should actually make us wonder you know, what this world is all about and who am I? Why am I here? Because this thought, this question itself is the beginning of our spiritual life. So, the Vedanta Sutra, the very first aphorism of that is that Athaso Brahma Jigyasa, which means, therefore, now inquire about the absolute truth. So, the scripture begins with therefore. You've seen any book that starts from therefore. Therefore. <laughs> it doesn't start like that. But the very first aphorism of the Vedanta Sutra says, therefore, now inquire about the absolute truth. What that means is that now that you've attained the human body, therefore, now inquire about our existence. How are things just working so perfectly? Right? So, trying to inquire about all of these things is the first. Uh, you will be tired like this. <laughs> sit up, no problem. Please sit. Uh, uh. So, trying to inquire about all of these things is the very first thing that uh, you will be And that is what in, uh, intelligent and different from the other animals or the other creatures. Uh, so, Krishna is here giving us a chance to think and understand and know him through different means. Like when you go down the taste of water or and the light in the sun. So, we see all these things and they, we can now think, okay, where is this coming from? What is the source of this? So, it is said that a pure devotee, he sees Krishna everywhere. So, it's like cause and effect. You see the effect? You know that there is a problem. Like you have a disease, then you go to the doctor and you say that uh, these are the symptoms I'm suffering. So then doctor will tell you, okay, this is your problem. This is your disease. Similarly, we see things in order in this world. So the question is, how is it in order? Now, who put it in order? What is the source of this light? What is the source of you know all these different planetary systems? What is the source of sun, uh, the moon? the electricity, the water, what is the source of all of this? So Krishna is giving us a very simple way of understanding and seeing it everywhere. It is said that a pure devotee, the Brahma Samhita, it says that Preman Jana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadeva Rideshu Vilokayanti. So a pure devotee, he sees Krishna everywhere. Why? Because his eyes are anointed with love. So we have these kids here and parents have the experience. If they see the shoes of a if they are of their child, what do they think? Immediately, it reminds them of their child, right? Oh, who is my child? When he comes back from school or whatever, immediately it reminds the parent of the child. Why? Because that love is there. Similarly, when, he, when a devotee sees everything around, it immediately reminds him of Krishna. Just like Prabhupada gave the wonderful example of Prabhupada when he's looking at Charlie Chaplin movie. So Prabhupada is not enjoying it from the material point of view, but he is immediately thinking that this ability of making someone laugh is coming from Krishna. So why? Because that love for the Lord is there. So a pure devotee actually sees Krishna only everywhere. So everywhere, wherever the devotee is seeing, he is seeing Krishna present everywhere. Right? So it's not blind faith. It's thinking beyond what we generally think in our life. We inquire, but we inquire about our food, clothing and shelter. But everything will be finished in 60, 70 years. So to inquire about what this world is all about, who am I, is actually where our spiritual life begins from. Right? So Krishna is giving us many more you know, ways of thinking about him that will come in the following verses. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I guess. So, uh, I think our exam, uh, 
Yeah. You want to say something? I just want to share something. So, um, like, it's not every time. So, this thought is basically going on. If I met her, actually, everything, everything belongs to Krishna. Hmm. Everything, everything. So, you know, I've heard. Huh? Right? For that, young mother, relatives. Relative, right? No, no one is giving that. Yeah. And the soul is just taking away. So actually, so uh, I studied yoga. So the yoga and uh, the main purpose, he lost his son. So then uh, when I went and you know, sorry, sorry to hear about your son. Uh, sorry, sorry for what? My son belonged to Krishna. And Krishna took him. I was, he said that. My good teams, you know, this is practical application of Bhagavad Gita. Well, it's so difficult to follow this, and actually, everything belongs to Krishna. Everyone belongs to Krishna. Actually, everyone belongs to Krishna. And my good team asked me, so we heard it in the morning. So the can in the kids state be taken out? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That is a fear, but then seeing the devotees. So I just feel we need continuous training, right? To train ourselves. Then uh, once I have passed, you know, this death thing creates fear in me. So he said for a devotee, someone who has already, uh, you know, acknowledged that yes, Krishna, you are the one, everything belongs to you, and death doesn't come as a either dying, comes as a. So it was a difference between cat holding a mouse in his mouth versus a kitten. So death is like a cat can catch, you know. If you're not a devotee, you'll you'll be seen as a rat, <laughs> cat catching you, versus a kitten. You know, the cat holds with the same sharp teeth the kitten, but uh, you know it's not harming the kitten; it's just picking out from one place to the other, just like you would carry a baby. Yeah. So uh, a very interesting example. I think I've shared this earlier, but it's relevant. So. Uh, Let's let's take a what's your name, Prabhu? Saurabh. Let's take your example. So Saurabh Prabhu here, uh, you know, he does some very great social service, and uh, the government of India is very happy with Saurabh Prabhu. And uh, you know, the government of India says, Saurabh Prabhu, wow, you know, here's a gift for you for your service. You know, Boeing seven or seven plane. So you can uh, you know take it anywhere you want. So Saurabh Prabhu decides, okay, well, what time is Mumbai Darshan? Nahi kiya? <laughs> so let me, you know, do Mumbai Darshan with my, uh, you know, plane on the street. Huh? It'll get stuck. <laughs> right? There'll be chaos, there'll be traffic jam, right? On, on the street, you know, it's such a big plane. So, uh, you know, the government will say, Saurabh Prabhu, hold on, right? The plane is meant for flying. It's not meant for, you know, taking out on the street. So if you want to do Mumbai Darshan, we'll give you a car. Give back the plane. We'll give you a car. <laughs> right? So it'll take, take away the plane and maybe give you a good car. So similarly, nature facilitates. Right? Uh, nature has given us this human form of life, which is meant for flying. It's meant for understanding. Like Roji said, you know, now, therefore, now that you have this human form of life, inquire, right? Because that's the purpose. The purpose is to understand who am I, you know, who is the Supreme Personality of God, what is my relationship with Him, and what am I supposed to do? If you don't inquire, we are no better than animals, right? Dui pa the pashu, two-legged animals. So, uh, so the nature will then facilitate, oh, you don't want to inquire, you don't want to utilize this human form of life, why are you wasting this, right? Get an You want to eat meat, get an animal's body. Become a tiger. Eat fresh meat in the jungle. <laughs> right? If you want to sleep for 12 hours, become a polar bear. Sleep for 6 months. Right? 
if you want to eat everything every nonsense that is there become a pig enjoy stool <laughs> so nature will facilitate facilitate as per your desire so it's very very important that we have this human form of life so utilize it for self realization that is the only thing that we have not done yet <laughs> everything else we have experienced this is the only thing we have not done okay moving on <clears throat> the next shloka punya ganda prithiyam cha tejas chasme vibhavasu jivanam sarva bhuteshu tapas chasme tapas visu someone read the translation Oh, sorry. Verse. Okay, let's do the verse again. Punya ganda patriyam cha, tejas chashmi vibha vibha vasu, jivanam sarva bhuteshu, tapas chashmi tapas vishu. Someone would like to read the shloka first. Sanskrit shloka. Chant the shloka. तेजस्मे जीवन सर्वूतेषु फ्रेग्रेंस very very interesting again one more story comes to mind where krishna uh, here krishna saying i am the original fragrance of the earth so uh, everyone knows uh, the incarnation of varaha varadev how many of you all don't know the story of lord varaha okay you all don't know the story of lord varaha okay so hiranyakashipu uh, suna ha narsimhadev hiranyakashipu right so hiranyakashipu's elder brother hiranyaksh right so hiranyaksh is a personality just to give you some perspective of you know what that personality was so when ravana right he was fighting lord ram he had lost so many sons and he was completely bewildered kare karna kya hai matlab maine to socha tha you know touch manushya hai unko aaram se hara denge with some monkeys it's like so easy but uh, you know it's so difficult right now so ravana he went to rasatal rasatal right i think rasatal he went to rasatal so there are subterranean planets right there are seven lokas above seven lokas below so he went to rasatal so there uh, vali maharaj lives it's also called bilva swarg bilva swarg uh, is actually more opulent than swarg <laughs> right and bali maharaj was king of demons at that uh, you know at one point in time uh so vaman dev is incarnation of lord vishnu he had stolen the entire 14 uh, planetary systems from him uh, by measuring it in three uh, two steps three, three two steps. steps two steps he measured the entire universe yeah. and then the third step yeah, bali maharaj offered his head uh, and seeing that surrender of bali maharaj because bali maharaj was a descendant of prahlad maharaj so he was a great devotee so seeing the surrender of bali maharaj uh you know uh, vaman dev he decided to If you know serve bali maharaj krishna also wants to serve his devotee serve bali maharaj as a god so uh, he he awarded him rasatal which is more opulent than swarga so this ravana since again coming from the same line of demons you know he approached bali uh, bali maharaj to take help right like great ancestor to chalo unse help mangte hain for fighting lord ram so when he went to rasatal so uh, at the gate entrance you know now raman dev was you know going back and forth back and forth and ravana was like very tiny in front of him <laughs> and ravana tried to enter but you know raman dev was like back and forth back and forth he was not with such force he was moving 
Ravana could not enter. With all his strength and might, he could not enter. Right? Then hearing the commotion, you know, uh, Bali Maharaj came outside. Then Ravana could enter. So, uh, Ravana ko leke gaya, apne palace mein, you know, uh, they're discussing. And then Ravana, he pleads to Bali Maharaj, please, you need to help me. Right? I'm your descendant and I'm facing this trouble. You know, the entire demon community, you know, Lanka is uh, already burned by, you know, uh, one of the monkeys, Hanuman, and uh, his master, Ram, you know, they're creating havoc. Please come and help. Uh, so he, uh, so Bali Maharaj, you know, understood the entire uh, situation. And then he said, I will give you one suggestion. If you want my help, I will give you one very good suggestion. Like a Sita Mahiya ko, Ram Ji ko apas <laughs> Right. The same advice Lord Shiva also gave him, others also gave him. Ravana was too stubborn, right? Uh, I was hearing, uh, I think, Amog Leela, he was describing, uh, you know, Ravana as HNS category. Hum nahi sudharinge category. <laughs> so, uh, so, you, uh, so, just to help him realize who, who is he dealing with. So, Bali Maharaj, he said, okay, come, come to my uh, balcony. Bade palace mein, there was a big balcony. So, uh, in the balcony, from the balcony, uh, he showed one mountain. It was a huge, humongous golden mountain, right? It was touching the sky. It was the top of the Raja. And Ravana went like, wow, so much gold. <laughs> right? So uh, he said, this is so nice, such a, you know, so much gold. Mere Lanka mein bitna nahi hai. Aisa, itna sara gold. So uh, Bali Maharaj said, you know what this is? So Ravana said, golden mountain. He said, this is the Kundal of Hiranyaksh. Hiranyaksh was a demon. It was called Kundal. Hai. So huge. Hearing. <laughs> Hearing, yes. Kundal. And uh, the personality who killed Hiranyaksh is the same person you're fighting. <laughs> right? So better give Mother Sita back to Ram. Like that. So Hiranyaksh was the elder brother of Hiranyakashipu. And uh, so what Hiranyaks had done was he had picked up Mother Earth and taken it to, you know, the Garbhadaka ocean, thrown it into the Garbhadaka ocean down. Uh, so the cosmology is difficult to understand, but still I'll try just to give some understanding. So in the, the universe is half filled with water. Lord Mahavishnu is lying uh, you know, on, on Shesha Shaya, right? And there's lotus coming from the navel of Vishnu. And Brahmaji is born on top of the lotus. And Brahmaji creates, and the entire creation is actually in that lotus itself. So there's a lotus leaf. Lotus dekha hai pani ke upar. Leaf rehta hai pani ke upar. So the top, the top of the leaf is actually Bhumandala. Bhumandala is the middle planetary system where Earth is also there, right? And jo stem hai and the lotus, these are all upper planetary system. And uh, that entire thickness of that lotus leaf, right, is all the subterranean planets. Uske niche pani hai, right, Garbhadaka Ocean. So he had actually thrown the earth in the Garbhadaka Ocean. Right? So, uh, you know, all the demigods, they, you know, approach Brahma. Brahmaji was also praying, uh, you know, how to save earth like that. So Lord Vishnu, what he did, he actually appeared... Uh, how he took, uh, so from the meditation of Lord Brahma, his prayers, Lord Vishnu actually appeared from the nostril, you know, of Brahma. <laughs> Brahma Deva Sabra, <laughs> right from the nostril of Brahma, uh, you know, Vamandeva, uh, sorry, Varadeva appeared. Varadeva is a boar incarnation, right? He, uh, his his uh, face is like uh, a boar and his body is like a human, like that. Boar in that. So he appeared and then he suddenly grew in size, very, very huge. And then he jumped into the Garbhadha ocean, right? And uh, he fought Hiranyaksh and killed him. So, Phir uh, se wo jab prithvi ko lekar ke aaye upar. So, Mother Earth was resting on the tusk. He had tusk also. So, he was re resting on the tusk. And then, through the breathing of Lord Varaha, right? It is said, all the fragrance in the earth is because of the breath of Lord Varaha. So, I am the original fragrance of earth, <laughs> right? So, because of his breathing, we have and understand so many different fragrances. We like we use so many perfumes, right? They're all coming from different flowers and natural. So each flower is giving different fragrance. So imagine the kind of fragrance you know is there from the breathing of Lord Varaha. 
and he says, I am the heat and fire. I am the life of all uh, that lives and I am the penances of all ascetics. So let's read the purport. Punya means that which is not decomposed. Punya is original. Everything in the material world has a certain flavor or fragrance as the flavor of uh, flavor and fragrance in the flower or in the earth, in water, in fire, in air, etc. The uncontaminated flavor, the original flavor, which permeates everything is Krishna. Similarly, everything has a particular original taste and this taste can be changed by a mixture of chemicals. So everything original has some smell, some fragrance and some taste. Vibhavasu means fire. Without fire, we cannot run factories, we cannot cook, etc. And that fire is Krishna. The heat in fire is Krishna. According to Vedic medicine, indigestion is due to low temperature in the belly. So even for digestion, a digestion fire is needed. In Krishna consciousness, we become aware that earth, water, fire, air, and every active principle, all chemicals and all material elements are due to Krishna. The duration of man's life is due to Krishna. Therefore, by the grace of Krishna, man can prolong his life or diminish it. So Krishna consciousness is active in every sphere. So uh, there are properties. Uh, so where sound has uh, ether. Uh, ether has the property of sound, right? Then uh, fire. You can see fire, right? It it, it sounds also. The jalta to kuch awaz hai. We can see it also. Then comes water. Water has taste. It has a form to see, and we can hear the flowing of water as well. And uh, last me there is earth, right? Air uske pehle aata hai, has the quality of touch, right? Last me there is earth. Earth has smell as well. So therefore, you know, the fragrance. Part. So, <clears throat> so basically, Krishna is an active principle in practically everything. Okay. Any questions or reflections so far? Okay. Last verse for today. Very, very important. Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutana Vidhi Partha Sanatanam Buddhi Buddhi Matam Asmi Tejas Tejas Vinamaham Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutana Vidhi Partha Sanatanam Buddhir buddhi matamas Tejas tejas vina maham Someone would like to chant the shloka? Yes. Bijam maam sarva bhutana Bijam maam bhutana Bata sanatanam Bata sanatanam Buddhir buddhi matamasmi Tejasvinamaham Translation And to increase seed of all the existence, the intelligence of the intelligence, and the progress of all powerful men. So, O son of Prita, know that I am the original seed of all existence, right? So, Bijan Maam Sarva Bhutanam. Krishna is the original seed giving father of all living entities. The question is that the question is that the question is So Krishna is answering here. <laughs> right? I am the original seed giving father of all, uh, every, all living entities, of all existence. So <clears throat> the intelligence of the intelligent. Some people may think, you know, I'm so intelligent. I've, you know, done so many wonderful things. Itna invention kiya hai, itna business mein dimag laga hai, itna, you know, innovation kiya hai, whatever. Right? But actually that intelligence is coming from uh, Krishna. So, well, again, previous shloka we heard, I'm the ability in man. So actually, uh, you know, when Krishna, he left the planet, right? Uh, he wounded up his pastimes and he left the planet back for, uh, you know, going back to his abode. So Arjuna, who was such a great warrior, right? even the demigods feared or actually gave respects to Arjuna. 
they actually called indra actually had called arjuna to fight uh, the demons because demigods could not handle alone so they had requested arjuna to join uh, so that he can fight against the demons and arjuna fought such so uh, so vigorously that the demigods were super pleased and they awarded him more you know astra shastra and all of that so arjuna was very very powerful but as soon as lord krishna he disappeared so arjuna he lost his ability and uh, he was trying to save you know dwarka and the queen sudarka etc he could not save them from uh, you know mere aborigines who uh, teer gamans ke sath chote se aaye the you know jungle mein jo log rehte hain adivasi type right unko bhi fight nahi karta and arjuna admits that you know this ability in me was there because of krishna and now that he is gone i have lost all my abilities <laughs> like that so krishna is the intelligence of the intelligent right he is the cause of your remembrance and forgetfulness if he wants he can remind you anything right at the right time the right moment you can speak the right thing right and if he wants he can make you forget and the prowess of all powerful men we just gave the example of arjuna bija means seed krishna is the seed of everything there are various living entities movable and inert birds beasts men and many other living creatures are moving living entities are moving living entities trees and plants however are inert they are immovable they cannot move but only stand so uh, trees are actually in a very very difficult situation <laughs> right imagine you have to just be there tolerate everything right therefore we say trinada api sunichana tarur api sahishtuna as, as tolerant as a tree right because tree tolerates everything heat light uh, you know uh, rain wind everything it has to tolerate it cannot move but, yeah people throw stones cut it down it cannot object <laughs> right it's a very very difficult situation so those who uh, like to expose their bodies right so nature facilitates just like you know you know what eat meat become tiger nature facilitates oh you want to remain naked stand naked for thousands of years become tree <laughs> like that so <clears throat> so these they cannot move but only stand every entity is contained within the scope of 84 lakh species of life so life is krishna as stated in vedic literature brahman or the supreme absolute is that from which everything is emanating krishna is para brahman the supreme spirit brahman is impersonal para brahman is personal impersonal brahman is situated in personal aspect like we just just discussed earlier that brahman is nothing but the effulgence from krishna's body that is stated in bhagavad gita therefore originally krishna is the source of everything he is the root as a root of a tree maintains the whole tree krishna being the original root of all things maintains everything in this material manifestation that is confirmed in vedic literature so we have to pata krishna is root of everything what should we do excellent yes so if you want to satisfy you know if you want to make everyone happy first of all there will never be a situation where everyone will be happy with you <laughs> right someone or the other will have some problem but you know more or less sabko satisfy karna what is actually very very pleasing to everyone there is some tendency of egoism in the sense that we yes at any point of time In, even you know as a human hmm. you you forget your ex- own existence focus on the child on the child yes so that is an inbuilt thing basically so you cannot we as humans we cannot change them so does that come from krishna i mean to say very nice question very yes. simple basically because you know i have seen the uh, generation the generation moving and it happens that's human tendency that you forget the your own existence and you are just moving ahead and uh, believing in something which you don't know what the tree is growing to and what the leaves are the branches are going out to so basically your kids yes how do you cope up with that i mean to say does is it uh, natural or basically is it right i would say that uh, a person should because you know we are selfish we believe in our own creation more rather than in our existence <laughs> so i would say that yes. okay very interesting questions i think there are two three parts to it i'll try to break it down and explain one by one so uh, first of all the tendency 
you know, to love someone and be lost in that, even forget your own existence. That happens sometimes. I actually gave a very apt example. So everyone is selfish, like you mentioned. So in the spiritual world, there exists real love, right? Material world is like a perverted reflection of the spiritual world. So love, the only place or the only example where there is some reflection, so some glimpse of that real love that exists in the spiritual world is a relationship between a mother and an infant child. Because there is selfless service. The child is an infant, right? completely dependent on the mother. Mother cannot expect things from the child. <laughs> right? She has to selflessly serve. Even the most difficult thing you would not imagine, right? cleaning somebody's <laughs> right so uh, that the mother does selflessly for a child yeah but then the same thing huh. is let me finish my answer yeah. let me finish my answer like so yes parent for sure you need to you know give that love and uh, you know raise children give not just you know blind love not uh, you know love without you know giving uh, real character and principles to the children, right? Not without giving them good samskars, right? So it says in Srimad Bhagavatam that do not become a parent till the time you cannot take your dependents back home back to God. Right? Do not become a guru till the time you take uh, your dependents back home back to God. Do not become huh? so Guru na sasyat, uh, Pitana sasyat, Sajana sasyat, like that. So Rishabdev, he is giving his teachings where he is saying this. So we have to see it from a spiritual perspective that, oh, not my son, but is a living entity assigned to me under my care by Krishna. So let me facilitate him so that he can connect to Krishna. If you serve with that attitude, you're not a loser. Right? Even if you, you know, put all your energies there, there is eternal spiritual credit for you. So you're not in loss. Right now, the problem is, you know, we are we, we ourselves don't know, you know, what the scriptures are saying, what some scars to give. And just because we've seen as a moral responsibility, we need to take care of children. We try to do that. And then we are frustrated because children grow up to be disobedient, to be rebellious, etc., etc., like that. So, uh, yeah, if you give the right some scars, if you train them nicely, that is the real purpose of, you know, family life, actually, to raise Christian conscious children. Does that answer your question? Uh, at least to some degree. <laughs> yes. About children. Uh, huh. now, I mean, I teach children. So nowadays, a lot of children, they, they complain of not being happy. Yes. So, Why only children? Everyone complains of not being happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. How do you help them? Yeah, so uh, you know, just simple for children, you play some kirtan. You're a good musician yourself. You can sing, engage them, they'll be happy. Kirtan is the best way to instantly, you know, raise the level of consciousness to goodness and beyond. So when somebody's ignorance and passion, they'll be miserable, right? And then they themselves will start inquiring or wanting to hear more of it, etc. Then you can preach to them slowly, steadily, according to their understanding, level of understanding. What is, uh, what is the philosophy behind, like, the Krishna is, uh, you know, Krishna, he is incarnated in the form of his holy name, right? He's a source of all, all happiness. When you come in touch with Krishna, you automatically become happy. So somebody who is miserable, <laughs> right? That's the best, best medicine, I would say. Yeah, Mataji is, you know, completely nodding here. <laughs> Personal experience. <laughs> Would you want to add something? We are discussing, uh, you know, how Krishna is the original seed of everything, intelligence of the intelligent, promise of the powerful. And Prabhuji had a question that, you know, is it justified to invest our time, energy in raising children who turn out to be rebellious? <laughs> it's about uh, not being just raising kids. Uh, for example, like as you said, uh, you have selfless uh, relation of a mother and son, mm. or maybe a mother and daughter, mm. where uh, there is no lust involved, and uh, it's just simple love. Huh. So, 
I mean to say, when the time comes to reciprocate for that love, hmm. why don't we do that? I mean to say, as humans. You should do it. <laughs> <laughs> not, okay, I'll just answer you a simple question. Yes. Now, if you have that in simple words that the mother can clean the pot, hmm. it's very simple for the mother to do it for the kid. It's so not simple. Kid, yeah. It's not simple. <laughs> it it ah. is. I mean, she does it selflessly because she ah. has that, uh, whatever, hmm. that love, whatever affection or whatever hmm. the expectation. Hmm. But at the same time, the son will never or the daughter will never do for the mother when they are aging. They will get somebody as an assistant or somebody. So that is where I'm just so I when, much wonder that we provide the service, but we are not ready to do the service as you know. I'm just saying that is because I'm selfish. I will not take it that way. Sure. I wouldn't want to have that smell or whatever it is. Sure. Whatever my inhibitions are. So if the mother does it with the thought that yes, I'm serving Krishna by taking care of this living entity who's been assigned to me. Who's Krishna's child? If you do it with that thought process, you're not having expectations of the child. Oh, he'll do the same for me. You will have. You are doing it as a selfless service to Krishna, and Krishna is excellent in reciprocating. So don't worry about it. <laughs> the amount of reciprocation Krishna can do, you will be overwhelmed. With this cycle, what you're saying, the same thing you will do it for your kid. I'm just uh, giving an example. Uh, but the same reciprocation you will not do to your parents. It's just the natural process. It's being selfish because you believe in your creation more rather than your existence. I would put it that way. See, at the end of the day, again, it is a matter of you know and your, God your God values. God. It is a it is a matter of saying, uh, God forbid, if I cannot give that provision, uh, uh, if I cannot provide that provision, uh, then I'm still selfish enough not to do that work. And we'll still provide like uh, service to my kid. I'm just giving an example. These, these are my thoughts. Uh, which I'm just sure. Giving. Sure. So uh, again, like I said, it's a matter of values. What values you have? There are examples in history. Say, for example, Shravan Kumar, right? Yeah, exactly. He was uh, he, he was just carrying his parents yeah. on a basket. Who would do that? Yeah, he, his parents did not carry him in a basket around, you know, with that kind of weight. <laughs> he was small, he could have easy, they could easily carry him when he was young, but he was carrying the weight of his parents. Now it depends on your values, right? What do you value more? What is your priority? Right? If according to you, your priority is your own creation, right? right? But if somebody's priority is, oh, let me serve Krishna in any form, right? If it means that I have to serve a child right, who's assigned to me, if I have to take care of people who are under me or if I have to take care of my parents or if I have to take care of the society in general, right? whatever service Krishna gives me, if my connection is you know, keeping Krishna in center, then I won't be frustrated. right? The point is, you will be happy still. Even if the other person doesn't serve you, you will still be happy because Krishna is directly reciprocating with you. You don't need somebody else to you know, yeah, fulfill know. that need. Krishna is directly fulfilling that need. Does that help? You want to add something? So this world, love is like that. It's not unconditional. It's based on conditions. That it's based on conditions. Yeah. Yes. It is in the material world. In the material world. In the, in the material world. As you, sorry, I'll just, as you connect to Krishna, unconditional love feature grows more and more. Yes, <laughs> So that example of mother and child is the closest you can get to unconditional love. Closest. But still, we see that even mothers expect that after my child grows up, there will be something I'll get into. That is how close it gets. But it's not pure love. Pure love is it's uninterrupted. It's unconditional. That we do not see in the material world. Every love, even if we say, you know, it's unconditional, it will be interrupted sometimes. And it will be conditional. Some expectation is there always in return. Okay. Because that is the nature of material world. We are selfish. But to the degree, like what you say, that value system in our is nice, it's built up nicely, it's in our childhood. To that degree, we will also want to reciprocate you know, whatever we have received, whether it's from our parents, from our teachers, from our family. Actually, as soon as we take birth in this material world, we are indebted to so many people. That is what the scriptures say. We say that we are indebted to our ancestors, we are indebted to the forefathers, we are indebted to so many people. We are indebted to the sages, we are indebted to the scriptures. 
So actually, we are supposed to reciprocate with everyone. But again, that becomes a very big challenge. We are indebted to the demigods, the sun, the moon, everything, because we are getting everything from them. And in return, we are not really giving anything. And therefore, if you have to fulfill all those debts, then the simplest ways, we we actually serve the Supreme Lord. Because just like it from the Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Yatha Turod Mula Nishechanena, Tripyan Piyatskanda, Bhujogashad. If you water the roots, automatically it fulfills, it nourishes the tree. If I know percentage, I just say. Now, if, if I, as you said, value everything I am, and you said, uh, ultimately what? devote your time to the Supreme. These are your words. So if I neglect all my duties, I'm just asking you what? If I neglect all my duties and I completely devote myself to the Supreme, <laughs> am I doing the right thing? Or right? I just want so, to. So, as suppose if I neglect my parents, if I neglect my so family. If someone, the scripture very clearly says this. If someone completely surrenders to the Supreme Lord, he is free from all other obligations. If he completely surrenders 100% to the Supreme Lord, he is free from all obligations. Because this is what Krishna himself says. Then he is not anymore uh, you know, bound for any other duties anywhere. Now, again, the question may be raised, why? Now, don't we have so many responsibilities in this society? Because then Krishna takes care of everything. So, we now feel that we are the provider, sustainer, supporter for so many people in our family. But actually, we can do nothing. No, that is true. Because that, uh, exactly. that is in your hands. So, so that is actually a false idea to think that I can also support my family or anything. No, no, you cannot control because it. Because the scriptures say that that uh, a child, if he's dying, even the parents are that they cannot do anything. True. Uh, so that is real understanding. So that is knowledge based on spiritual understanding. Who I am and what is my actual relationship with the Supreme Lord. That is permanent relationship. Whereas these are temporary relationships. If someone completely surrenders to the Supreme Lord, he is completely free from all obligations to anyone and everyone in this world. So therefore, our responsibility and duty is to serve the Supreme Lord. But at the same time, whatever, we do not say that tomorrow today you leave all connections. Yeah. But whatever connections we have, if we actually make Krishna the same, then those relations get spiritualized. Then they are no more material relationships also. They are spiritual relationships centered around Krishna. So... In that sense, that also becomes service, devotional service, in fact. Because then these are Vaishnavas, these are devotees of the Lord whom I am serving. And uh, complete surrender, definition of complete surrender should also be as per scripture. That's not complete surrender. Complete surrender as per the scriptural definitions. Right? So one has to, uh, even Krishna describes Vairagya, right? What, what level of Vairagya you have internally that much you should exhibit externally. Not that the internally could shoot any external just to escape my material situation. I'll you know temporarily go out and you know and, you know escape my responsibilities. That's also not something which Krishna uh, agrees with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we'll stop here. Any any other questions we can discuss individually? Prasadam has started. You can take some prasadam. <laughs> okay. Take it. Please, oh, so, okay. Because today actually we are going to take Prasad down. Maybe we quickly take Prasad and we can have some reason after that. If that is okay. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. So there will be many people down. Hare Krishna. We'll try and come back to the